my part of my presentation, you know, as uh, this is a study. We've been studying because, so well, we, what we're going to talk about uh, today mainly is uh, um, about the different uh, stages that we have uh, in uh, social policies in Latin America from late uh, 80s mm, mm -hmm. uh, until now, more or less. And, uh, and we can recognize, uh, I think, th three, three uh, periods. Mm. Um, one that is, uh, uh, in these periods are uh, marked by what we call the influence mm, from uh, the recommendations of the financial and technical institutions, financing institutions, mm, uh, financing uh, organisms, particularly the International Monetary Fund, IMF, the World Bank, and the Inter-American Development Ma Bank. Mm. We also have uh, another influencing uh, institution, which is uh, the uh, Commission for Latin American Studies for, of the United Nations, yeah? But that's, uh, that's not a financing institution, it's only technical, yeah? But it's quite uh, influential. Um, the night, as as you see, the the what I I call in, uh, here is the apogee of neoliberalism, what we call the Washington Consensus. Yeah, after a meeting that uh, take, uh, took place some somewhere in Washington <laughs> in in 1989, mm -hmm. um, of politicians and uh, technicians and so on. Um, that they, they were something like uh, um, launching the, the most important lines mm, uh, of uh, new recommendations mm, to, uh, of course, getting out. This is, uh, as you can see, uh, a moment in the whole world, I mean, uh, with very uh, important political uh, events, mm, like the fall of uh, communism, mm -hmm. um, of course, the, the, the crisis of the welfare state, mm -hmm. uh, which in Latin America as in, in other countries uh, uh, was marked with something like at, at the middle of uh, the s um, yeah, 1970s. Um, this period here also marks in Latin America what, what we have called, as we ha has been known as the lost decade. Because uh, we have, uh, uh, particularly in the south cone of Latin America, as you may know, uh, a lot of uh, dictatorships, you know. Um, and uh, uh, at the end of the 80s, like in Argentina in 1984, um, uh, we have we will, we have the the return of democracies. Yeah, but the, the the last thing was that we came back to democracy, but we were in, in economic crisis. Yeah, so uh, it didn't match mm, economic crisis with the with democracy. So it, it uh, the Washington consensus was marking the beginning the hegemony, mm, the start of the hegemony of the neoliberal. Uh, um, perspective, you know. Um, what was what was what is uh, a fundamental premise of the Washington Consensus? The expansion of free markets hmm? uh, results in economic development and, and welfare. What was known as the trickle down theory. That means that if we have uh, uh, we have to focus on uh, the expansion of the markets. If we focus on that, we're going to have uh, uh, economic development. And if we have economic development, we, we are going to have uh, welfare for every, everybody, you know? Everybody is going to have uh, uh, his, uh, his or her job and, uh, and they can pay for, for their own welfare. Mm? Um, well, I, I already talked about the, the, the strong influence. Mm? This influence, it, it was always there, but it, it, is, uh, it's, uh, it became more influential. This, uh, these agencies became more influential after uh, the, the end of the, a the 80s. Uh, what were the main um, recommendations? 
The concentration, that's a particular word uh, we use to replace the word of decentralization because they called about decentralization. But in fact, uh, we think, <coughs> most of us think that it wasn't decentralization at all. The <coughs> difference is whether you decentralize, you're decentralizing everything, the resources, economic resources, yeah, human resources, and uh, uh, decisions. Mm? Uh, what in fact happened was deconcentration. Mm? The shift of responsibility mm, of certain social policies, especially those that, uh, of course, don't uh, uh, take a lot of money and uh, uh, mm, we have to spend a lot of money, but they are not, uh, uh, how would we call, efi economically efficient, like education or health, no? From national to subnational and local jurisdictions, yeah? And and if we can, to private hands, you know. Uh, but they, the, the idea was to keep control of central governments, yeah. That for, for example, in Argentina, that's what happened to education, that is the oldest uh, public policy in our country, mm? uh, since the, 18, the, the end of the 18th century, and uh, well, Education was decentralized mm, to the provinces and to municipalities, um, but central government is still mm, has a strong <coughs> influence of uh, has a control, you know, about programs mm, pri in primary, secondary, uh, and, and uh, universities. Mm. Mm. Um, <coughs> The other um, uh, recommendation, strong recommendation, was reprivatization. Mm? I don't know if I use uh, uh, I'm using the right word outsourcing, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. of social services, mm? especially NGOs. NGOs grew a lot. Yeah, uh, um, it was a, it, it was a, uh, quite a funny um, experience because. NGOs uh, started to grow uh, in most of our countries uh, at the beginning and the beginning of the, uh, the 18, 18 beginning and, and middle of the uh, 1980s. But with other, uh, they, they particularly uh, work with children and different uh, social problems. Hmm? But with the funding of private uh, uh, agencies, European private agencies mainly, <laughs> like the Who's chairman here? The like the Eber uh, the Foundation and the well Swedish foundations and things like that. Uh, but the, this time, hmm, the foundation, the, the sources of uh, the economic uh, fun financing, uh, turned to a different. Uh, uh, they, uh, from these agencies to the IMF uh, financing hmm, and the World Bank particularly, these three, mm, and the Inter-American Development Bank. Um, and uh, uh, it's uh, important to tell you that uh, the financing of this, um, it, it, it was uh, especially um, given to NGOs and to the status, mm, of course, to, to, to um, uh, finance this uh, education, health, and other, but particularly, ha as we will see, social programs directed to poor families. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, the thing is that this financing increased the national debt. Yeah, a debt that uh, all of us pay. Yeah, <laughs> and um, that was reprivatization and outsourcing of social service. The other one. The very, very uh, important uh, strategy was the implementation of targeting strategies, yeah? What we call target, target strategies. Uh, that th they are targeted to either specific areas, yeah? Like uh, malnutrition, mm -hmm. uh, maternal and child health, mm -hmm. and also target to particular specific populations. But the problem was that, uh, that they target vulnerable population that were more than half of the population of our countries at this time. Because uh, uh, 
because of the uh, implementation of free markets, mm, the result was that poverty grew instead of uh, slowing down. Yeah? And uh, we have this the expansion of welfare programs. Mm? What means that uh, the work, I think you have in Britain, this work for programs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, United States. <laughs> the Amer it's uh, an American uh, import. Uh, that's uh, benefit payments mm, in exchange of uh, communitarian and institutional. Mm -hmm. Somehow in some, uh, um, well, factories mm, uh, of, uh, or private labor, I mean factories or, or, or organizations. Mm as the main way of uh, assistance to, to the poor. The idea is, uh, if you want to uh, receive a subsidy, you, you have to work. You have to uh, mm, prove that uh, you can uh, work for that, yeah? Um, this uh, were mainly the uh, um, Washington Consensus first uh, uh, recommendations. What we call, we, we call about recommendations, yeah? These are also called the first generation, the first generation of recommendations, yes? Because then after uh, um, <coughs> these recommendations didn't, didn't work much, they come with the second <laughs> generation <laughs> <laughs> recommendations <laughs> of reforms, reforms, yeah? Uh, we're gonna, yeah. Uh, well, this is, I, I call this uh, the transition from first generation, from the Washington Consensus, to the second generation reforms that uh, has, they, they are being known also as post-Washington Consensus, yeah? Mm -hmm. From the mid-90s to the early 20s. I would say, I'm marking here the early um, 2000s, but uh, the thing is that somehow we continue with this. We, we, we can't, we are in the transition we can't say that uh, we have uh, yeah, finished in implementing uh, and uh, the second generation reforms. In fact, second generation reforms gave place to what I'm going to uh, talk about a uh, little bit uh, later, that is uh, a, uh, another set of recommendations that we are, n we are having now, that's uh, a new um, concept of social protection. Hmm? Uh, that means, uh, um, well, we, we will see it. So we can say that s we haven't finished. These recommendations also have a quite a lot, uh, are quite influencing uh, still today. Mm? What are the main characteristics of this uh, uh, recommendation? First of all, a political recommendation to the governments of the, of the status, you know which is uh, the combination of a state of civil society because the first generation reforms meant reprivatization. So the state apparently should uh, uh, um, uh, leave aside uh, uh, social intervention and mm, should intervene. Mm. And uh, now they say we have to combine the action of NGOs, mm, private, the private sector, and uh, uh, the state. Mm in the implementation of social programs. Uh, I, uh, social program is a, a specific and very particular way of social intervention uh, in our countries that is very important uh, uh, to, to know and to understand because uh, there are, uh, well, targeted so uh, social programs, yeah? Like uh, social programs for mothers and children, hmm? Uh, social programs for uh, well, um, it, uh, for feeding hmm, children and so on. Um, this are uh, this uh, um, recommendations brought uh, a lot of um, uh, political and social uh, categories, you know, like uh, good governments. Well. They think uh, uh, good governance because uh, um, they suppose that uh, um, our governments, our Latin American states, are weak status, and uh, um, uh, uh, well, filled of uh, a lot of um, clientelistic practices, hmm? 
where, where they do have <laughs> a clientelistic practices. We are not going to deny that uh, from our governments, no? Some more than others. And um, the other uh, word is uh, concept is sustainable development. Hmm? Uh, participation, which uh, has a, uh, well, a lot of meanings, but particularly, as we will see, has the meaning of that we have to make people participate, you know. I, it's funny because when we, you, you were talking, and it's amazing, this uh, <laughs> neuroscience uh, um, approach, neuroscientific approach, no? Um, we have a more political approach, as you can see, yeah? And I think that uh, this uh, um, has to do with the politicized uh, uh, societies uh, we, we have. Mm? Is well, uh, um, in fact, the dictatorships, you know, um, started because of the social pro protest in, in countries like Argentina, Brazil, Chile, uh, was uh, high, no? Uh, s uh, or, uh, the organizations of uh, workers' organizations and, uh, well. Um, human development, hmm? social capital, uh, among other, this, uh, I, uh, there are categories that uh, uh, try to um, uh, become principles for political and administrative policies and social intervention. Do you follow me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, well, these are um, the main uh, social programs mm, are policies, <coughs> in fact, directed uh, to poverty alleviation. The, this has been a different, they've been changing the, the names of this. At the beginning it was to fight poverty, hmm? to combat poverty. Hmm? And then uh, came the alleviation of poverty, yeah? And um, always target to poor and indigent <coughs> families. We, uh, well, I, I make the difference here. We go, we, we have, after poverty has grown, hmm? uh, we have, different levels of poverty hmm? and sociologists, uh, social workers, politicians, every social scientist uh, been working on the and researching families uh, and researching poor families, hmm? poverty in fact, uh, to see the, the different levels and according to these levels come the, the, the pub public policies, no? You in like a, uh, crossing the line between indigence and uh, poverty, mm -hmm. yeah, means that uh, they need uh, a, a regular family, need a certain amount uh, mm, mm. Uh, of subsidy mm. to uh, survive. Mm. Uh, and if they are poor, they are over the line of uh, surviving, you mm. something like this. We mm. have, uh, in fact, uh, new, new poors, the new poors, the people that lost their jobs and uh, no and they they just became poor because losing their jobs uh, mean that they also lose the whole the uh, security and health systems mm? they were uh, beneficiaries uh, of and uh, well and in here i uh, fo i'm focusing on the post washington consensus what I call the redefinition of the familialist policies. Uh, I didn't say at the beginning, what I'm going to uh, well uh, stress now, that uh, in Latin America in general, hmm, there is a very strong tradition of familism hmm, in our policies. And as we will see uh, soon, maternalist policies that, uh, well, um, uh, I think that uh, they are s uh, strongly um, related to our culture, mm? traditions and culture. Most of uh, our countries are of a Catholic um, mm? uh, um, inheritance. Uh, uh, and we have to say that this familism came with a moral, always, <laughs> with a moral point of view uh, about the family, you know? How the family should 
be how the family should behave and so on. Mm? Um, these are, um, we can see, as you can see, the post-Washington consensus came with a more mm, a detailed and uh, sophisticated mm, technification of uh, concepts and uh, uh, that uh, uh, practitioners can apply mm, when implementing social programs. Uh, they were focusing on families as units of observation and intervention. What th this means is that, uh, uh, well, as units of observation, that means that uh, families uh, are um, used that, uh, for studying, you know, for studying the, the practices, the social practices of families, family practices, yeah? And the behaviors and things like that, yeah? And the intervention, of course. But in this unit, women are the focus. Mm? And why? Because they are the guarantors of administration mm, of households and the intermediaries between social programs and beneficiaries. What, that, what does it mean? Um, means that uh, they are the best for administrating and, of course, the subsidies that they, they receive uh, for um, uh, guaranteeing that that money is going to be properly used mm? <laughs> and uh, they, because they are we have this uh, um, uh, ethic of, uh, you know, sacrifice. Mm? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, we all do have. <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> when, we, when we look at our own practices, mm -hmm. <laughs> we are more or less the same. And, um, and the other thing is that we also mm, uh, work in, in, the, in the community and they are the best intermediaries, you mm. know, between mm. the, um, the, how do we call it, uh, red, the networks, yeah, mm. the social mm. networks, families, social mm. networks, the whole community. Mm. This is it. And the other um, characteristic is uh, what has been known, it is they are known because the we still have this conditional cash transfer policies. That is, um, twist to the warfare programs, you know, a different twist. What, uh, what, what it means that these conditional cash transfer policies are directed to women in the families, yeah? Uh, and uh, they supposedly um, are directed to empower women, yeah? Because uh, um, all these programs now mm, are uh, quite influenced by the new uh, gender perspective, yeah? Um, coming from, of course, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, feminist uh, and women's movements in Latin America that they've been quite uh, strong and quite influential, yeah? Uh, since the seventh, uh, yeah, since the 1970s. So, uh, empowerment and greater participation of women, but, I agree with those that uh, have a critique to this, that is, it, is, it happens at the expense of work overload, yeah, uh, for, the women, for women, the household, the paid labor, and the community work. Mm? Time, you. <laughs> well, uh, this is it today. What I, uh, I like to uh, uh, say a few words about what we now call uh, increasingly, mm? Uh, uh, there's a new concept coming coming into this is a basic social protection, yeah, and uh, this is uh, again the return to the state, but the, the establishment of social protection floor. Uh, the thing is that the social protection floor combines a minimum of economic security for for families for, mm, and access to basic ser services, but the coverage grounded on citizens' rights, yeah? Uh, these policies are coming back with the uh, recovering mm, the concept and the practice, more than concept than the practice of uh, citizenship, no? And citizen rights. Um, new type of uh, familialism, this directionality to women in the role as mother, 
which are deepening the maternalistic tradition. Eh? Prioritization of services aimed at relieving family care. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, these are most based on Argentina. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want I know I, I didn't want to speak uh, uh, for the Chilean colleagues and the <laughs> uh, and the <coughs> other Latin American countries. Um, they are deepening this materialistic tradition, and and we have this prioritization. We we can uh, see some few uh, steps, you know, to uh, uh, state pu public policies mm, to relieve the, the uh, to relieve family care, mm. but like uh, more um, uh, nurseries for for children and things like that to help women to go and work uh, for paid work uh, outside the, the the household. But they have we have a, a, a quite a lot of obstacles mm, in in their implementation. Coordination, <laughs> because as uh, all health and education mm, has been decentralized, deconcentrated, as I said, it's, it's quite difficult to uh, coordinate. And we have a huge country from the up in the north, a city or, or a place up in the north and in, in the south of the country. Uh, and uh, well, we have, uh, fortunately, mm, greater strengthening of policy measures addressing violence against women. We have uh, new legislations about this, but we have to put them in practice. That's uh, another thing. And uh, intra-household violence, sexual abuse, and illegal human trafficking, that, that's a terrible problem in all Latin American countries. And we have, a, these are the critiques, I would say. A weak, uh, policy of reconciliation of way labor and family care. Mm? There is a lot of talk of policies reconciling, mm? uh, especially for, for women, you know, the wage labor and family care. And absence of policy for the promotion of poor responsibility in family work, and I end with this. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem, this is my perception, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of discussion about this, mm -hmm. but uh, with all this feminization of policies, men are Lost mm. nowhere, you know. Mm. The, the, there is no, um, yeah. Uh, the, there are no policies directed mm. to men. What mm. what they're going to do now? Mm? Uh, uh, we need more uh, the promotion mm, of men uh, work in in the household mm. because some are unemployed and the women work and and mm. men are unemployed. You know, so. Um, well, this is it. I know that uh, thanks to uh, everybody for listening to me. 